Has the western part of Rhode Island gone rogue? The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Listen, yesterday I, I was kidding. Uh, today I'm not. Uh, I, you know, I had some fun with this issue yesterday, but now I see that most of Western Rhode Island is engaged in this sanctuary conversation about gun rights, and it's becoming a little bit out of control. The wheels are off general understanding of what government institutions are, the rule of law, and this comparison between immigration issues and gun rights, it, it, it's apples and oranges, I'm sorry, it's apples and, it's, it's apples and uh, pizza, okay? And we have to talk about this. Welcome in, nice to have you aboard. Lots to do tonight. We have the executive director of the Rhode Island Coalition Against Gun Violence here to, I don't know, I think bring some sanity to this conversation. I'm hoping that we can get some of the elected officials in each of these western Rhode Island towns to come here so we can talk about this. Some have been on with me on the radio and will con continue to pursue. I'll explain as we go. In the meantime, great to have you in. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, the president exerts executive privilege. This is on the report, not on Mueller himself. So Bob Mueller very well may come to see the House and maybe the Senate as well, but the redacted report will remain the redacted report because the unredacted report now is being uh, exercised under executive privilege by the White House. This will be another court battle. And it just goes to show you that uh, complete transparency is, is more than just words. In the meantime, <laughs> in terms of transparency, Trump's billion dollar loss headlines the New York Times piece. I am sure that the base is going to say, well, of course, you know, he already told us that he was messing with the tax laws. Uh, he's, he always, you know, that's because, that's why we elected him, because he's smart, you know. I. I, I just, you know, there's always an answer here, but the truth of the matter is, is that one of the reasons the president is probably not too excited about tax returns being offered to the general public is because there's a lot of truth about his net worth not being as large as he says it is. Gee, have you ever heard him exaggerate anything before? No, nah, not me. Uh, and this notion of how he, he avoided taxes is something that might actually even upset people who are proclaimed loyal because they don't get to do these things. Anyway, we'll follow that story as we go. Big day in Rhode Island yesterday trying to turn this education titanic around. The education reform bills, a big package. Eyewitness News has the story. Top lawmakers taking action months after the first ever RICAS exam showed Rhode Island students lagging far behind their peers in Massachusetts. Obviously, we were disappointed with the test scores, uh, the assessment uh, uh, figures, uh, which made it clear that we have to do something about our education system. Dozens of legislators on hand for a statehouse news conference to unveil seven bills they say will fundamentally change the public K-12 system in Rhode Island. We have to change our governance model so that more decisions are made at the local level, at the school, with the principals. Leaders of the education committee saying they looked north to how Massachusetts started successfully reshaping its education system 25 years ago. We looked at the gold standard. We looked right next door to Massachusetts, which everyone always says is number one. And they suggested the best place to start what they did at the beginning of their process was to look at their curriculum, make sure that it was in line with instruction and assessment, and include the stakeholders, the students, the teachers, and the administrators. We looked for the gold standard. We looked and we looked and we looked and all, oh, and then Senator Gallo, oh, the Commonwealth, where 40% of our viewership and listenership on the radio exists every single day. The Commonwealth, 
which established, you know, 20 years ago, a track record on this. The Commonwealth, which used to be called Taxachusetts and no longer is and is a gold standard of economy. The Commonwealth. Here's what we need to do. We need to applaud our Rhode Island legislators for finally taking their heads out of the sand and trying to do some of the things that the Commonwealth has been doing. Hopefully this is some momentum that's been created because the Commonwealth has a governance model which is a whole lot better on education. Many mayors sit on school committees and create some synergy between those two forms of government so that we don't sue each other over this kind of stuff like we do in Rhode Island. The Commonwealth has a better tax system. The Commonwealth is ahead of us on X number of things. It's not perfect, but the Commonwealth is an example on a whole lot of levels. Hopefully this is the beginning. You gotta get behind this ed reform, folks, or we are in really deep trouble. We'll talk more about it over the next few shows. Uh, speaking of schools, this yesterday was just another one of those, oh no, I can't believe it stories. Uh, some details on what they found. Once at the school, they immediately engaged the suspects and started to uh, rescue the, the children that were injured. Uh, we have um, an, an adult male that we sent out information on yesterday in custody through our interviews yesterday late afternoon, um, determined that we have a juvenile female uh, that is in custody right now who is the other suspect. You know, it was, it was interesting. Uh, last night I was talking to someone I know very well who after seeing this in the news said, you know, it used to be everything stopped in this country when a story like this happened. Like everything stopped. Now I think we count fatalities and we think, oh, well, right, Linda? Uh, Executive Director of the Rhode Island Coalition Against Gun Violence. We'll talk about what's happening here in the state. That's why we originally invited you in. This happened yesterday. What's your thought on it? Welcome, well, you, by the way. Thank you for joining thank you. us. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, it's another young man that threw himself in front of a shooter at a school. And, you know, we're putting our kids on the front line of this because the adults in the room are not doing anything about it. And we just keep talking about it. We just keep talking about it. But nobody's really doing anything. Meaning what? Not doing anything about it. Meaning what? Well, I think that we're not, we're not putting into place strong enough gun laws. You know, we, we, we're allowing 18-year-olds to buy AR-15s. Most of them don't have police records. We don't know what their mental health you know, situation is. We don't know why they're buying them. We just allow them to go into a store and buy an AR-15 and buy 100 rounds of ammunition in this country. And we're really the only country that does that. Most countries don't do that. The new Rhode Island legislation soon to become law, uh, or did become law. It did become I'm, law, I'm the, sorry, red, I, the red flag I, I get law. Yep, it Sometimes, did. Uh, well, the red flag law is, is one thing. The red, the red flag law came from the show. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the, it did, because I was talking with the Attorney General, and the Police Chiefs Association got behind it, and then the governor copied it, whatever. And who, I, I'm not looking for, uh, for credit, but my point was, you know, can't we, can't we use some law enforcement discretion in order to be able to get in front of somebody who's showing signs of problem, right? But right. the current gun legislation uh, helped me because there's so much stuff that's coming through the pipeline. The House passed two of the three items that the governor wanted in terms of redefining what guns you can have in Rhode Island, the limited ammunition, and then there's the, the no, school nothing's ground been stuff. Passed. It's nothing's still in the passed. hopper. It's still in the hopper. Okay, right, nothing's right. been passed. The, 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 been the speaker, the, I'm sorry, yes. you're, you're, this, uh, my, my bad. The yep. speaker indicated to us that the school portion most likely wouldn't pass. And so maybe they're rewriting that whole thing. Or maybe that whole thing is going to go on the shelf. I'm not sure. Well, I hope it doesn't go on the shelf. You know, we're just talking about the school, um, y you know, restructuring that, that the state wants to do and using mass as the gold standard. I mean, Massachusetts has banned assault weapons since 1994. They've banned high capacity magazines since 1994. They are the safest they were the safest state in this whole country because they have good, strong gun laws. Massachusetts registers guns, so they know if there's a crime, the police can call up and they can find out and say, oh, okay, you got this gun, what's the number on it, and I can figure out where it is. Do you know in Rhode Island, the only way we find out where guns are is this, this, the ATF has to go to every single gun store and say, hey, is this your gun? Did you sell it? Did you sell this gun? Did you sell that gun? We don't keep track of them. 
there's a lot of things we can do better in, in Rhode Island, and we can do them federally as well, and that we're getting nowhere, so we really need to do it on a state level. All right, so, th so that being said, we've got, we've got mass, uh, Rhode Island towns that are, 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 are just acting up right now, and we're going to talk about what's going on with that. Stay with us. So Hopkinton joins Burrowville, and we're going to just fill in the whole border, it looks like. Gloucester, Foster, Richmond, uh, everybody, uh, West Warwick, uh, West Greenwich, not West Warwick, West Greenwich, who knows West Warwick, I don't know, they're a little bit more urban, I don't know. How, I, I, right now it's hard to figure out what's going on here. If you haven't seen the latest, take a look. Town video of the Hopkinton meeting reveals the reaction to the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Not in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Yeah! Three to two, town leaders passed a resolution declaring Hopkinton a Second Amendment sanctuary town. Supporters came out strong to send a message to Smith Hill as state leaders consider bills on guns. Beyond the resolution, the declaration supports the police department's right to exercise sound discretion on gun-related laws, and it refuses to use town money to pay for the storage of weapons seized by any new gun legislation. What Second Amendment um, advocates are asking for is for law enforcement to cherry-pick the laws that uh, they want to really obey. Kat Curran with the Rhode Island Coalition Against Gun Violence says the resolution is meant to demonize advocacy groups. Not only a bad idea, but it's also not not something that municipalities should be allowed to do or really can do. Hopkinton is just the latest. Burrowville passed the same resolution last month, and now State Senator Elaine Morgan is calling for other towns to join them. Yeah, Elaine Morgan was fiddling with coming on this radio program uh, on this show, but she was offended by some of the things I had to say as I was swatting phone calls all day yesterday. Uh, and most likely this afternoon, in part, on on this matter. I, this is this is very concerning to me, and it's not even necessarily specifically about the gun matter. The idea that towns think that they can just create this concept of sanctuary, which is that whatever the state gun laws are or any laws are in this town, we're not going right. to. Well, the, the the language of these referendums in both Burrowville and Hopkinton. Don't go as far as the legacy that they are creating already and the reputation and the feeling that people have. I can tell you how many people dialed in yesterday thinking that this was like once you drive into Burrowville, gun laws are off, you know. Right, exactly. You know, that we're, we're, you exactly. Know, we're on Little Idaho. Exactly. And that is not what they're doing. Exactly. I have a problem with the idea that they're branding their communities in a certain way. I don't care if they brand their communities, you know, about elephants or or you know baby diapers or whatever i mean you just can't the idea that there's no consensus there's no referendums there's there's none of that deep-rooted constituent pulse that is being drawn out to decide that you're going to label your town something like this is really concerning to me what's concerning to you well, I think the thing that's concerning to me, like you said, is sending a message that our law enforcement can just cherry pick the laws and decide which laws they want to enforce. I'm not sure that the law enforcement in these communities is 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 playing the ball that these town councils they think they are they're not. playing. They absolutely are not, and the, and the, 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 they're putting them in a very awkward position because they are being they're hired by the town. I mean, they report to the t these town councils, and their town councils are saying to them, "No, we're going to tell you which laws you enforce. You don't get to decide." You know, the, their their oath of office but is to follow, is to enforce the laws that are on the Rhode Island books, and so they're being put in a really awkward position by these resolutions. And I think you're absolutely right; it's sending a message that we don't have to abide by the laws. And you know, gun laws. They're, they're, the other thing they're saying is that they're not constitutional, and every single gun law on the books in Rhode Island does not violate the Second Amendment. And none of the gun laws that are being proposed by the Attorney General and the Governor violate the Second Amendment. So they're they're trying to make them sound as if they're gonna be the they're gonna decide whether or not they whether or not they abide by the Second Amendment and then they're gonna decide which laws get enforced. And it's dangerous. It, it's really dangerous. I, I think this is rooted in a couple of things. I think there's some underbelly work being done by some zealous gun advocates who are trying to really shake the trees. There's also an underlying understandable frustration in these communities that they feel disenfranchised from what's happening at the state house. Now, you were a state rep a handful of years ago. Uh, you had your experience with that. Um, you're from the East Bay, so or 
do we consider Middletown? Oh, Quidnick Island. Uh, Quidnick yeah, Island yeah, East Bay. You're not yeah, the East yeah, Bay. You're, you're over the water from the East Bay. You're all the way down there. Um, I always feel like I've gone somewhere else when I go to Quidnick <laughs> Island. It's an island, island. you know? This, um, but I think there is a, it, there's a frustration there. There's a little bit more Republican representation there. Uh, there's a bunch of acting out, and I'll tell you, the representatives in in the state house from those communities are not stepping up and speaking out about about the the danger that lurks with this kind of activity by their town councils. I don't know who's going to talk any sense to them. I'm trying. Are you trying? I, I know you're I appreciate trying. That. We, and you we found are, you're finding are, it very intimidating, aren't you? Well, I mean, I, they're posting pictures of me with memes online, you know, um, accusing me of things that I, you know, haven't done. It's a little, it's a little frightening when you, you know, your pictures being shared by two or three hundred people, and some of them are even lo even our own representatives that are, you know, well, that's not, ridiculing that's the work that we're trying to do. And so it, and it's intimidating. And some of the, you know, we have several hundred supporters that live in these ca in these communities, and they've been reaching out to us. And they're trying to go online under the town Facebook pages and trying to, you know, argue their side of the issue, and and they just get, you know, they, they get media, pummeled by it. Social so. media is a cesspool. <laughs> it's a cesspool for this kind of stuff. Right. Uh, but this notion that advocates for gun rights, and by the way, I'm fairly ambivalent when it comes to this issue in general. I think you've got some points to make. I think gun rights right, advocates absolutely. have some points to yep. make. I don't like the entire package the governor was proposing. Uh, that included the concealed carry uh, prohibition on the school grounds. I thought that was a too far a reach. I don't think the speaker is going to let this bill, even though I misspoke about it earlier, is going to let this bill come out. We'll see. Uh, so I'm not like the big anti-gun guy, guys, but I am the big anti-chaos uh, uh, guy. And I, 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 I see when these communities are using this issue to finally put their stake in the ground to say we're really only, we're not even kind of Rhode Island at this point. We you know right. this is the beginning of a real mess around here. Um, I'm concerned about those people that you say are in the hundreds, maybe thousands, who see this happening and don't know where to go. They don't. They they really don't. They're trying to they're trying to go. They're um, they're trying to go to the town hall meetings, but you you see, they get you know vastly outnumbered. They get shouted down. Um, they get intimidated, and 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 I think it's unfortunate because I mean, while these communities on the western side of the state, they're fortunately they're a very small percentage of our state. Maybe seven percent of the population lives in these, in these communities. It's a small number to begin with, and then there's a small number within that community. But they're very outspoken, and they're very, um, you know, they're very vocal, and they're, you know, they're visible. So they, they but they are they're intimidating another voice. And I think that with these resolutions, you know, it's one thing to say like. We don't want you to ban assault weapons. Like we don't want you to do that, and we're going to fight it, and we're going to put in a resolution saying that we don't support that bill. Okay. That's one thing. But to put in a resolution to say that we're just not, if it gets enforced, if it gets passed, we're not going to abide by the law, that's we're a not totally different or thing. Or we're not going to fund the police department right. to do the things the police department wants to have done. It's a very, so they've been advised by their own police departments on how to thread the needle here. The effect of it, though, is being interpreted by people who don't read the fine details. Right. right. That hey, guess what? Right. I can walk into Burrowville and do whatever I want uh, with my gun, and I'm not talking about violence. I'm just talking about I'm just talking about capacities, the definitions, uh, all that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, more on this when we come back. You know, how do how do we turn this around, if at all? Burrowville is part of Rhode Island and has to follow state law. So if these laws pass, which I hope they do, because they will keep people safer and kids safer in schools, I expect that they will follow the law and the state police will enforce that law. Um, if they disagree with my position, go lobby at the state house. The right way to do this is to go lobby at the state house. But to secede from Rhode Island and our laws is not an appropriate response. You know, the governor was kind of uh, you know half chuckling there a week or two ago when. She was talking about this on the radio. Uh, I don't think anybody's laughing right now. Uh, and it's putting everybody in a very, very difficult position. The arguments are made that the term, uh, this guy Don Fox from Burrowville, who is welcome to come here, who's on the radio with me last week, cited Mayor Lorz's claim that Providence is a sanctuary city and the immigration, how immigration 
is intersecting with gun rights is beyond me. But Alorza makes these political claims. There is no proclamation, right. resolution, ordinance, definition. In term, the sanctuary city for immigration you know, protection is a political branding Absolutely. term. Absolutely. It is not an official declaration of the officers of a certain community. But that doesn't seem to matter right. to and people who think this is a great idea, who think it's the moral equivalent and the answer to guys like Alorza on a matter that's not even related to their right. key issue. And the, and the bottom line of the sanctuary city, I mean, that was a term that the Republicans came up with to sort of criticize governors that are saying that we, what the, well, they're saying is that we are not going to use our own law enforcement to enforce federal immigration laws. That's all a sanctuary city is. And just as just as a couple years ago, no, but they abide by every every every, every federal regulation absolutely, that's necessary. Absolutely, absolutely. They're just but yeah. our police force they don't enforce federal laws; they enforce state laws. And, and it's funny because the, the Providence Police and the Cranston Police operate duplicately on on these matters. One mayor says I'm a non-sanctuary city; the other mayor says I'm a sanctuary city. But that's irrelevant. We only right. have a minute here. Tell me what you think is happening. Is is it, is this a burp? here in Rhode Island to be calmed down, or are you, what, what do you, where do you think this thing is going? I'm concerned about it, I, to be honest with you. It's a small percentage of the state, but I think, but I'm concerned that any lawmaker in Rhode Island is advocating for our police to not enforce laws, and I think that there's a, that's a really dangerous threshold to cross over, and I think, you know, we go to the state house, we have hearings, they're, they're, they can be very animated and they can be very loud and hostile in the hearings at the state house. But like when the laws are passed, because the majority of the state believes that these laws should be passed, then we have to abide by them, you know. And just because we don't agree and we're in the minority doesn't mean that we just don't we don't abide by the laws. And I think it's a dangerous president. I think it's a dangerous president for our kids to say, you know, like, hey, you guys, you don't have to abide. You know, you can just choose whatever laws you want to you want to want to violate, you know, smoking pot, no big deal, you know, you don't have to abide by the law. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of layers to this in, 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 in starting these things. We're, uh, we're starting to respect a little bit of tyrannical behavior. We're, we're, we're Absolutely. Th there's a pulse here and there's a, there's a mood in this country that uh, the gloves are off, the rules don't matter, and institutions be damned. And we'll see. Uh, keep up your good work. Uh, you and I may not agree on all of the nuances of everything that you want to do legislatively, but I think we can agree that we want to be able to do this in context. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Linda, thank you for your work. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, and come back if any of these folks any, want to talk with you about anytime. it. Right? I'm happy. Absolutely. Happy. Uh, final word. Next. Seriously. And for those of you who are watching these things happen in your communities thinking, I didn't buy a house in this community to be known as this, you better speak up. Um, and for those who are supporting this, guess what? The economies of your community, the people who don't like this stuff, you know how they speak? For sale. Think about it. Good night.